All right, guys, so this is the third video I'm doing on a variety of sound. Um, I told you guys I might do one where I recap the plugins. I did that yesterday, and then I also mentioned in the original video that there's probably enough here to do a full mix with, and that's what today's video is about. Uh, if you're watching this and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave uh, related links below so um, it all makes sense. Anyway, um, I'm doing a session. Uh, the track is from a good buddy of mine, Zach Cantor. Um, he used to play drums, was signed to Warner for a while, uh, but now, like many of us, he basically writes for himself, by himself, uh, and, uh, you know, pursues licensing opportunities, film scoring, stuff like that. And what I have here is um, he sent me one of his, like, first... Uh, uh, one of his first projects when he kind of started getting into this, uh, you know, into music production at home. So basically, it's a minute and a half. Um, it's definitely got a film score vibe to it. So you're not going to hear the uh, the pop arrangement you might be used to. It's more it's more of like a cinematic, um, you know, to treat cinematic uh, visuals and stuff, you know, like an action sequence. Um, so we're going to do the session. Uh, as you can tell, I've got my lights off here. I've got my uh, mood lighting for um, uh, getting creative and all that. And so basically this is an invitation. If you're watching and you want to sit in on a mixing session, you know, this is the time to do it. Now, what I've done to try to kind of move things along is I've gone through the session um, and picked some things, but I've, uh, I've basically disabled all of it and we're going to go from scratch uh, and I'll just kind of talk through my approach as I'm working on it, and I'll use a lot of these uh, variety of sound plugins, okay, that, uh, you know, have, has been the topic for the last couple of weeks. So let's just cut right into it. Um, here's the track. Like I said, it's a minute and a half long. And uh, Zach went ahead and sent me a, a rough. This is basically right out of whatever DAW he's using. So this is kind of where he wants levels at and, you know, how he sees this thing being laid out, uh, laid out volume-wise, excuse me. Um, before I even play it, you know, one thing you notice right away is there's a middle section here where, you know, there's something probably a, a bit too loud there, but we'll get to it. Let's just check out the track real quick and get a good feel for what, what it needs. Okay, so a couple of things that I hear uh, off off the top of my head is that you know there are you know there's a section in the beginning and towards the end there that doesn't really have a lot of stuff in it. So just as a general kind of broad stroke here, I know I'm going to want to take certain sounds, pretty much the sounds available in any section, and try to make them bigger because I, I don't have any additional music there, and I think there's a string line that kind of was a bit loud, we could tuck that back. But all in all, you know, I gotta say the balances aren't too bad and you know, it's not, not a bad rough mix. So let's just get started. Um, because I am, uh, I do the videos on um, my other computer, um, unfortunately I don't have that much CPU power, so we're gonna have to get creative and, and render tracks as we kind of, you know, shape them with EQ and stuff. All right, so let's just get started. I've organized all the tracks here. Uh, there's my, my, my sub, the kick, snare. Let's just start with the sub. 
and we'll listen to the original sound and basically what I put on there and why. And again, these are all the variety of sound plugins uh, that I'm using here, so you should have all these. All right, so here's the sub. I'm just going to loop it real quick and uh, listen. So it's a pretty decent sound, but what I ended up doing was um, I put on the Ferric TDS. Now, if you guys remember from the video from yesterday, this is basically a tape saturator. And as always, I've told you guys this many times, uh, a lot of people frown on templates. I love starting with templates, and if I need to tweak them, I do. Um, my overall philosophy with plugins and templates is uh, let these things do some work for you. You know what I mean? You don't have to be some sort of a purist where you got to start doing the thing from scratch. Let, let the plugins work for you, okay? So anyway, so I looked through his presets, and the nice thing about Bootsy's collection is uh, they all have, uh, you know, a good amount of presets. So I figured, okay, why don't I just start with this obvious uh, acoustic bass thing? You know, even though this is a sub, I thought maybe, you know, nice little saturation will fatten it up. Let's listen. Now you can rewind that and listen again if you need to, but basically this does uh, very subtle uh, coloring and uh, it tightens it up a little bit and gives it a little bit, a little bit of tone in the, you know, a little bit more towards the upper mid, but very, very barely noticeable, which is fine. The thing doesn't need too much, um, too much coloring anyway. So that's what I did there. On the kick drum, and let, let me just play the kick drum with, with it as I have it bounced. Now, I find that the kick is a little bit, it's nice, it's fat, it's big, but I think it rings a little bit too long, or that ring, the sustain is a little bit too dominant, and I think we're going to have a problem once everything is playing at once where this thing is going to really muddy up a lot of the lows. So, um, what I basically did was I started with uh, the Nasty VCS, uh, this is basically his virtual channel strip. So I explain what it is in the other video, but basically I thought, hey, let, let's check this out. Let's see if there's anything cool. Uh, went to the plugins, I, uh, drum exciter. Well, okay, let's see what that does. I threw it on, not really knowing what to expect, and let's see what it did to it. Now bypass it and, and uh, enable it back and forth. Now, I hope you're hearing it, you should be hearing a little bit more aggressiveness when it's enabled, a little bit more of the top of the kick. You, you hear the kick's getting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, but I wanted to take it a bit further, and the next thing I did was I took the boot EQ, and again, went through the presets, and I, I, I used this tight drums, but what I, what I noticed was that the the low, the boost on the low, I, I forget where it was on the preset, but it just wasn't, you know, I, I kind of felt like the nasty VCS tightened it up, gave me more mid on, uh, gave me more action on the mids, but at the cost of losing the bass. So one of the things I did when I got my tight drums on, I basically boosted up all the way to 12, listened to it, and we got this. And now I'm going to bypass them both back and forth. Now notice that when I have them bypassed, um, the original one is much louder. Um, if they were evenly balanced, uh, they're not evenly balanced. But basically, the, the ones that uh, the one when it doesn't have the plugins on it, um, I mean, it's really that resonance that I was telling you guys about it. I mean, it's really hanging there. It's going to be a problem when they're when the effects are enabled. It's a lot cleaner. You know what I mean? It's more contained. Let's listen again, real quick.
You know what I'll do? I'll just go ahead and, and match the volume so we can really hear it exactly the same way. I'll just put this on zero. Let's see if that does it for us. It's a little bit louder, but I know you guys, I mean, you guys hear that, right? I mean, we're really getting, we're really getting some beautiful shaping uh, uh, from these two plugs. I mean, the kick sounds kind of dull and uneventful, and then when we enable them, I mean, the thing just pops. Anyway, so, okay, so that's what I did there. Okay, going to uh, bypass all this stuff to keep the CPU power fresh. Um, all right, so here's what we have, the, the snare on its own. By the way, you guys uh, hear that uh, bell or that tone, that high tone? Uh, I think Zach didn't mean to do this, but he he bounced the snare with um, you know with this bell. It's not a big problem. It would have been nice to have the individual control, but not a big deal. It sounds good. Um, I wanted to darken it uh, because I just it, you know it's the kind of the hollow snare thing, and and it sounds good. But I just kind of thought it was like a little too for my taste. I just wanted to darken it up. So what I did was, and this is not the free, uh, this isn't what any of the free plugins. This is basically, I just went ahead right into uh, Cubase's. They have a built-in EQ, as I'm sure whatever DAW you're using, they have a built-in EQ. By all means, always feel free to adjust that uh, if you need to. You don't have to be married to just using the insert uh, plugins. Anyway, so I just darkened, I just darkened it up a little bit, beefed it up, and and then I added the following plugins. Started with the density, wanted to try it out. Uh, went through some plugin, I mean, uh, some of the uh, presets, um, and the Schnitzel one. Uh, you know, I don't know what 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 it's actually uh, designed for, but for my purposes, I kind of liked what it did to the snare. doing very little there. Uh, next I brought in the uh, boot EQ of course, uh, went to Retro 1, was looking for a little bit more action and you know perhaps that's a little hot maybe we could turn it down but the that's why I wanted to darken up the snare. I just didn't like that hollow clean snare, it just felt like it needed to be you know grungier. I'll just bypass the two, uh, the density and the, the booty cue. Let me bypass it a few times for you guys to see what we got as a difference. So, okay, still pretty subtle, but, you know, some shaping going on. And lastly, what I did was I took the Epic Reverb. Um, the way, I, the way to use this thing is pretty obvious. You, you're going to know whether you want a big room, whether you want a little room, a mid-sized room, a hall, whatever. You're going to kind of know what you want for your sound. And after that, the, the, the easiest way to use this thing is basically find the preset um, that, you know, pre, you know, you want to try the ambiences. And essentially, all you want to do is just, just tuck back the uh, wet dry knob, you know, so... You know, if you really want to get into it and you want to tweak some of these EQs, knock yourself out uh, from a, uh, you know, somebody who works with more of a production flow, I, I really, I know better than to get too bogged down with designing my effect, you know. Uh, that's why I lean heavily on the, on the presets. Anyway, so I knew the snare, I wanted it a little wetter. I wanted the whole thing wetter because uh, the mix, the rough mix is pretty tight, you know, but... This really has a film score vibe for me, and, and most of the cinematic stuff is pretty verby. You know, it's pretty open. So anyway, so I added the uh, the epic verb, and I put it right in the insert. I know a lot of you guys like to do auxiliary channel. Uh, I do this because I find that it's a lot easier to bounce out tracks uh, individually. You know, you're, you're not stuck with an auxiliary bounce and then a snare bounce. You can hear I'm putting in quite a bit of verb. 
Now I'm going to bypass it and just go back and forth a few times. So I mean we're you know we're making a you know a pretty significant change there. Okay, so let's let's move on. So that's what I did there. Next up, we have a clap. Uh, with the clap, for me, it was pretty simple. I actually I still remember it from yesterday. It's uh, hang on. The clap, I really liked the ambience it, on, it had on it. It had a reverb on it, and it was pretty nice. But I thought, you know, like I was saying, I, I didn't think it had enough pop. So I took the um, the Thrill Seeker LA, which I think is pretty much the LA2A, the LA2A and found, a, found Fast Opto over here. And I knew that's kind of what I wanted, quick attack, quick release, because I wanted those uh, claps to really just kind of pop. You know, that's more like it. Now think about it. I didn't add any reverb. I told you the ambience was pretty good. And this is really all I needed. That sounds pretty sweet. Now, uh, basically the way to work this thing is, uh, if you, you look for a reaction, uh, but you crank the input to push the signal into the compressor, okay? See, I'm going all the way back to three. You want, you want to stay two to three. I mean, if you're really trying to get wild and create some new sounds, I mean, of course, you could just do something like this you know if if your track calls for it but for the most part if you're trying to call her you go two to three okay so there we go that's that's all i needed to do there with the clap you know i, I didn't really feel like more needed to be done uh next we have hats uh let's listen to them uh in, in their natural state here The one thing I knew uh, needed to happen was um, more movement in the hats. So the first thing I actually ended up doing was I threw on the nasty DLA, right? The delay, the filter delay. Went through a couple uh, different uh, presets, found one. Again, what do you do if it's too intense and my preset was too intense? It had the flow I wanted, but it was too intense, wet. The wet, dry, wet here, I just backed it off. And look, I backed it off from zero all the way down to minus 8.4. So I'm getting very little action off this delay. I'm, I'm mixing uh, not that much into it, but check this out. As opposed to this. Right, so that's pretty good. After that... Uh, after I got that delay figured out, I knew it was still a little dry, I wanted some uh, reverb, again, threw on the epic verb, found a preset that kind of had the right space I was looking for, and again, this thing is always at 100, I took it back, you know, I took it back and until it sounded right, and then, or it sounded right to me, I should say, there's no right or wrong here, but uh, here is what we get now, and I'll bypass it a few times. Right, so totally kind of creating a, a very nice little groove there. Anyway, so that's what I did there. And next we have uh, the timpanis. And th they only happen a few times. Let's see if I could just isolate them and, and loop it for you. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they come in, they're, they're on the break. And they only come in once, the, the timpani part. Now... Here's what we have. This is what they sound like. Right? And they don't sound too bad. You know, you could kind of tell they're in a room. But again, remember what I was saying when we started this. I, I knew I was going to have to occupy some space. And the one thing we're not doing that I was doing while I was mixing is I was listening to everything in context. You know what I mean? 
I could we can't hear the drums now because I just don't want this computer to crap out while I'm doing this video but I was referencing all this and basically just saying oh they, they should have some verb and you know essentially that's the process um, so on the timpani I thought you know what I'm gonna go ahead and throw in another uh, nasty DLA because uh, I, I thought, you know, I don't want it to get carried away where I'm uh, delaying, doing long delays on this thing, but I thought, you know, it'd be cool if it had some sort of a slapback to kind of, uh, you know, like a, a weird room ver uh, verb, slapback, short slapback. Right, so what's happened there? You know, I don't, you know, it's still... You hear the original form of it, it just, it complements the groove. It doesn't completely, like, have these long running delays, which, which would be crazy, so. And even perhaps this is maybe a little intense. Maybe I should tuck back the wet. Okay, so that's what I did there. And again, a lot of the sounds already sound great, so I don't have to EQ the toms. The toms are nicely EQ'd. Uh, I mean, the, the timpanis. Now, here are the toms. Now, the toms is the one that I think, yeah, they only happen a few times. So here are the toms, and they happen at the end. There's a big explosion. You know, so they're already, I probably didn't really even have to do anything, but for the hell of it, I took a, an epic verb. Again, look for a preset that I like, and then boom, tucked back the uh, the mix uh, on the wetness. And without it. So, you know, the reverb I added does let it ring a little bit longer, okay? All right, uh, and then lastly, I had cymbals. For the cymbals, I put on the, X uh, the XTC Exciter. Um, all right, so this is an exciter. This is really nice. This thing's really nice. Um, basically, uh, if you remember from the other video, the exciter, it basically distorts certain frequency bands, okay? So uh, on this one, it's top end one. Now, I'm dealing in cymbals. I thought, okay, well, this is something obvious to go to. And uh, look at my pleasant surprise here. Let me find you the cymbal pattern here. All right, so here's without it. With it. It's, it's sparkling, you know, it's, it's really nice. Uh, these exciters are really good. All right, now look guys, so this is it for the drums, okay? So, in the next session I'm gonna open, the drums are all rendered, and then we start focusing on the music, okay? All right, so now let's listen to, let's listen to our drums, and I'll go ahead and mute all the music uh, and all the plugins. Let's just see what we ended up doing last session. Alright, so we did an okay job, right? I mean, those drums sound pretty decent, right? I mean, we're, we're using all of the VOS plugins. That's all we're doing, right? And this, the drums sound pretty good, if you ask me. Um, Alright, so moving along, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute the drums here. And let's, let's focus in on the bass and work our way down through all the music tracks. Alright, the bass. Here's the bass by itself. Uh, let's see, I should probably loop it where it's playing. So the bass is almost like a synth cello.
And remember, on that part, not much happens. It's basically the drum loop with the bass. So with that in mind, uh, the boot EQ, I put bass presence to thicken it up. And look what I did again, guys. I boosted the low. I really wanted that. Here's what's happening down here. You see the switch? It's basically saying that it's got a little a, a narrow bump at 40 hertz and I'm cranking the shit out of it. I'm at plus 12 on it. So I'm basically I'm boosting those subs. I'm really focused in on them. If I switched it here, this would be a cut at 40 hertz, all right? But this is basically how you work that. And that's the same way uh, up top here or anywhere else with these switches, all right? So you can make it narrower Q. Anyway, so I'm boosting this because I know I want I need to fatten up that synth. I'm going to go back and forth a few times. Okay. Um, so th this is why this, you know, um, that booty cue is, I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous what the thing is doing, right? I mean, it's, it's a really solid plugin. So there, with that just in there, I got I got that fatness, I got I got this richness, nice quality. The next thing I did, again, I'm leaning on this DLA a lot, but I wanted to spread the thing out a little bit. I know it's a bass, it's a dangerous topic when you start discussing uh, delaying basses and stuff or, or reverberating them, but I went ahead, threw this in, tucked back the wetness, I found this thing called Groovin', it was interesting. I stop it you could hear the delay you hear that very short so what all it's really doing is acting as a thickening agent right because I'm trying to spread this thing out right so that's what we got on the base now let me bypass both plugins at once Pretty dope, right? If you can't hear that, I, I can't help you. You know what I mean? If you can't hear why these are like pretty intense friggin' plugins, you know, I just, there's nothing I could say. All right, let's move on. All right, I threw on an exciter. Let's bypass it real quick, though. Uh, we're dealing with the strings. Right, the strings are also that one section in the middle. This is the thing in the rough bounce. Remember I showed you guys? This is the thing in the rough bounce that is way out of whack, and I think it's the strings in the rough mix. But that's okay. We'll we'll make sure to get them in there uh, and balanced right. Okay. So here is without any plugins. All right. So the first thing I did was I put in the vo uh, the XTC exciter. Right. I already told you guys what the exciter does. Check out my plugins. Now look, I picked Vocal Sheen, right? Why would I do that? I've made other videos about this. Sometimes, you know, if you don't have a starting point, you want to start with a preset, you're going to have an element that they're not spelling out for you. Oh, hey, this preset would work well with the texture in, in your guitar, right? So I, I have a string part, and a lot of those string frequencies can be compared to maybe... Uh, an upper upper scale uh, female vocalist, right? So vocal sheen might work really nicely uh, on those textures, and let's see if it does. I think it works pretty nice. It color it colors the frequencies that kind of need it. Uh, after that, look at me again, pulling out the old delay. Uh, let's see, I did a washi ping pong, tucked it back a little bit. I, you know, let, let's see. All right, so a little bit more delay action there on the tail, but still, 
I'm using it not so much as an effect, but as a way to kind of wash or spread out the few elements that are happening in the track to fill it out, right? Okay, and the last uh, piece of uh, music track that we have is the bell. And the bell, I believe, only comes in at the end here. Okay, there's the bell. Let me loop that. All right, so it's okay, but again, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to squeeze these things to get them to show a little bit more personality. I use the uh, the Tesla SE um, harmonic distortion. This is basically an exciter uh, for all intents and purposes. Just assume this is an exciter. Uh, and basically, I thought, you know, this sounded pretty good with it. Know what I mean? It really gives it that presence and, and makes it sparkle. Uh, after that, we went to, uh, apparently I wanted to sparkle more because I went to another exciter, uh, the XTC again. More of the same. I guess maybe we're getting a little bit more clarity. And topped it off with some verb. I wanted a big church type thing. I found the church very long open. Uh, and if you notice, even though this is a pretty rich reverb, notice I didn't tuck it back as far as I usually do because I probably wanted these things to have an appearance of just being in a big open space. So let's see what that sounded like. Right, so I really was going for you know a big deep uh, tail on that. All right, it looks like uh, there was actually two more music tracks, so let's get to those. Uh, guitar, it happens once in the end, and it's right here. Uh, with this, I think I use yeah I use the Tesla again, uh, since he doesn't really have um, any. This guitar is already distorted. Uh, It'd be cool if Bootsy had like a distortion, more of like, you know, like a guitar simulator thing. That'd be pretty cool. I, I think I would enjoy that. But I went ahead and pulled out the, the Tesla. Again, it's a, it's a circuit saturator or you can, I consider it like an exciter pretty much. It's probably one and the same. So I threw that on there and I probably juiced the saturation a little bit more than I did on the belt. Let's see. No, I left the presets exactly as they are. Um, so basically, I guess I relied on the distortion that was already inherent in the guitar. Here it is with nothing on it. So again, it needs to be woken up. Let's just call it that, right? When you're mixing, you want to wake these things up. So, and the way we do that is, you know, I first I throw on the Tesla. Right, it's really, it's distorting all the right frequencies. Uh, we're getting energy now. I mean, tes that Tesla SE, SE is pretty good. That's pretty good. And then I went uh, ahead and I threw on again a, a delay. Uh, I was, this was reminding me a little bit of Dave Navarro from, uh, I don't know why it came to my head. I, I was thinking Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction and I thought, oh, he always had those crazy wild delays on it and I threw this on. Right, so, and that's where I left it with the guitar. Uh, after that, the last bit I had to do was the effects, and the effects, I mean, they really only happen in two spots. Um, let's see, right, they happen, one, one happens here, it's the riff. Okay, very dry, that, that obviously needed, needed to be soaked. And then this one, and I just put them both on the same track. You know, I didn't feel like they needed separate tracks. I really kind of felt like they were background elements anyway. Right, and so what I did was I just said, okay, this is kind of my effects track, and what do I need to do with it? First thing I did was 
uh, clean master just to tidy it up again with with the exciter really nice I love uh, this is really nice this is really creating some really excellent textures so that's what it sounded like on the bass right so a little bit of color there and then I London calling was just a preset I found and notice I really juiced this thing because I was thinking like these are these riffs are a little odd to me maybe you know like I'm not sure I understand them but I thought this would be really cool if it was something that happened in the background and I left it at that right I just I thought well it'd be cooler if they're just kind of trippy all right so and that's where I left it with the music all right now in this last session I rendered the music our drums are rendered right and then I do the next thing I do when I mix what are we coming on 40 minutes now I'm, you guys must be sleeping well if you're not it's still hopefully we get it a little bit more interesting here towards the end all right so everything's rendered all the effects that we just went through I bounced them right they're all bounced now the next thing I like to do is and I've mentioned this before is I like to create buses stereo buses now just in case you need a refresher all my drums okay all my drums my my uh, my kick my snare my sub they're all going to the drum bus my bass my screen's a little small here my bass goes to stereo out I don't bust my bass you can if you like uh, and then the rest of it is basically is all the music tracks right so the rest of my music tracks right here from after bass from string to here they're all going right down into here into my music track right and this is the original rough and then what I did was I started to shape my bus is coming in right I'm just gonna bypass all this so my here my drums came in right First thing I did was got out the old LA-2A or the Thrill Seeker LA, whatever you want to call it. Found drum assembler and pumped it, juiced it a little bit from the zero mark to get my needles to react. And of course, this is not uncommon. Uh, putting a compressor on your on your bus is you know usually the first thing you want to do. Powerful, right? Powerful. I mean, it's not bad without it, but with it, it really just kind of gives you that old, here it is. Uh, and then I put on a back, uh, Backstreet Q. Okay, you guys remember this? Um, from the, whatchamacallit, from, from the walkthrough I did, uh, basically uh, found expensive top end. Uh, you know, and by the way, he does recommend, Bootsy recommends that you put this on a bus anyway. So, I, hey, look, I threw it on a bus just for the hell of it. And uh, expensive top end. I said, I'm, I, I could use some expensive top end on these drums. Let's see what this does. So it's cool, right? Even when I'm bypassing the bus plugins, you know, our mix, the drum mix sounds pretty decent. Even when we don't fuse it with any more compressors, you know, even if we just left it clean, it's it's pretty good. But, you know, with, with them on, it, it, it tightens it up. All right, anyway, so that's what I did on the drums. And on the music... I put in the density, which, by the way, density is another one where Bootsy recommends you using it on a on a bus. So I threw it on the music bus. Found this uh, mid side two bus preset. By the way, something I want to tell you guys: um, if you're messing around with this thing, uh, this right here, when it's on stereo, it links. 
it links the knobs because if you're not on stereo, if you're on mono side, um, one of them is the mono and the other one is the side and they move independently. So just so you guys know, if you want to, if you want to link them up in stereo, it's right here. Anyway, um, so I went ahead and threw this on. Let's see what that did to the music. It did very little, it sounds like. And then the boot EQ, I put on a vintage preset. I don't think I tweaked anything. All right, so it brightened it up a little bit. It, it doesn't sound like I'm really, really adding too much to it with those plugs. Very mild. All right, and then lastly, I go both of these drums and music out into my master bus. The first thing I put in, I put in good old Tesla SE, a good starting point. Um, don't remember if I backed off the set. No, pretty much put that in. Right, so that gives me a little energy there. I might actually want to back off a little bit. Uh, next, we had the Tesla Pro, now you remember uh, the Tesla Pro is, it's a saturator, tape saturator, but if you crank, the, it'll let the transients pass through. So like the kick and the snare and anything that really pops, it'll let it pass through. And lastly, and I had to do it guys, lastly I put on the limiter 6 because um, Bootsy doesn't really have something like this. At least maybe one of those tools can do that, but I, I couldn't find it. So I had to, again, this is still a free plugin. It's not Bootsy's, it's not from Variety of Sound, but it's from Vlad G. And if you guys have seen my mastering video, this is what I use. And I went ahead, went to my trusty old Master 3 starting point and went ahead and, and did basically what I do in that video. So uh, if, if you haven't seen the video, I'll leave a link for that below, but let's see if my computer craps up if I roll this thing out. Keep, keep my fingers crossed here. I have a funny feeling she's not gonna make it, but we're almost at the end here. So we got that, and then we had this, I guess. So again, I, I think Zach had a nice balance on the stuff. You know, I think I thought it was pretty, it was pretty good. It sounds pretty good. So, 
you, you know, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, that's the gist of it. I mean, you know, it's basically just more polished, which is the whole point, you know. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it was kind of fun. I hate doing these hour-long videos. Uh, you guys usually fall asleep after three minutes, but uh, if you've stuck around this far, I hope, I hope this was beneficial. It was fun, and uh, maybe we'll do another one one of these days. But uh, I think this concludes everything with the variety of sound plugins. You guys enjoy them and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.